Մոնձրովեպի Ռոմլեպից ասև է ամբողոդրոս ախերխեպ են այդմանի չորիս կորդինացիաս, դա ասև է սայնտերսով մատի ստրատեգիաց։ Ուտրավեմաջոն է, ուգի դուրես մեմաջոն է պորդուկուրի պարտի էպի, իրջավ են ստրատեգիաս, պո Եկրեցո դեպուլի էլիտուրի պրիուսելիս էլիտուրի պրոյեկտի ստաշվա։ Դա դուգարության էրդ մագայիտատ շաշանդել արջան էպս միսի շատեկեպի։ Սախեզեք ուակս էրուպաշի ոտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտտ
of their representation in the in, in local elections or, you know, or as in the case of Poland in the, in the national elections. It was very uh, some of the remarks that uh, Kaczynski, uh, the the leader, de facto leader of the Law and Justice Party, made that uh, this uh, these immigrants are bringing disease, uh, and they uh, they are very dangerous for for the um, for the Polish population. Really, uh, had an impact uh, on the. Do you think the, it's a sign of? Of mainstreaming hate speech in uh, Polish politics, or is it just an exemption? Um, the, the it, it seems it seems that uh, the um, the idea also uh, being not to talk politically correct is as as seen as uh, an expression of, of, of freedom. I mean, this this is the uh, the point that they uh, they want to make. And we we see this also even in the United States now the the uh, elections for. Um, uh, for the uh, Republican Party, the candidacy for the Republican Party, Donald Trump makes this politically incorrect uh, kind of kind of statement. So this the idea of speaking uh, freely, in in a sense, uh, allows them to uh, to also say rather uh, xenophobic and un unfounded uh, statements, of, uh, particularly on this on this case of. Um, uh, of either Hungary, Viktor Orban using similar language, or the, the Polish case, the uh, World um, uh, World Health Organization came uh, came up with uh, with a statement saying that this it's uh, very unlikely that such such statements hold true. Just to, yeah. to counter that, yeah. but of course there there are also other long term kind of uh, uh, factors that uh, have fueled the rise of of the. Of the uh, right-wing parties, uh, for instance, the the, the crisis of uh, 2008, yeah. um, and here we see a big split between the Eastern European countries and Western European countries. Where, uh, if if in the Western Western countries, it's both immigration and 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 uh, economy, the bailouts in the Eastern European yeah. countries is more immigration. Uh, so um, that is a, a thing, and then there is the, the sort of the deep right wing legacy of the european um, european uh, societies um, yeah. who can start with you know the nazi legacy and fascist legacy this is very very well seen in, in romania for instance in hungary uh, in in austria in the freedom party uh, in germany there there is uh, although it's banned but it it, it shows itself with uh, do you th yeah do you think the, the pegida movement is kind of a uh, coming back of uh, neo-Nazi sentiments in uh, Germany, is it alarming or is it just a temporary trend? Uh, that it seems seems sort of uh, um, the uh, the interesting thing in, with with this uh, with this movement was that uh, uh, it's sort of because of the scandal of the leadership. Uh, the uh, the clear sympathies with uh, with the figure of uh, of, of Hitler as a, uh, which already became became available to the public um, they so it disappeared in a sense but those supporters were pulled in uh, from um, this other party which is a small alliance for Germany yeah. is, so there also the interesting thing happened was that uh, this the the party had uh, affiliates in, in the east and uh, western germany and uh, the the founder of the of this party which again had this um, had this uh, uh, mission to uh, to actually not to stop the bailouts so it was an economic uh, the the the, uh, the members one of the leaders now who was from the, from the eastern uh, eastern mm. part of germany Came out with this uh, anti-immigration uh, rhetoric, and in the and, and the, the founder left the party and tried to to, uh, to yeah. establish something else. So these Pegida uh, supporters, I think, uh, have been channeled in, into this uh, yeah. this new split uh, alliance for for yeah. Germany. You mentioned the uh, slight difference between. Um, generally speaking, Western mm. and Eastern Europe, but do you think that uh, fear of immigrants, uh, problem of immigration is a universal pan-European fear? It is, it is, yeah. it is. Uh, I mean, that has, has been a, a, a sort of 
has been uh, very evident uh, throughout because throughout most of the most of the immigration uh, that goes to to Euro European countries has been a long and persistent and some uh, we saw the reaction in Switzerland we saw the reaction especially in the Nordic countries you have this anti immigration and anti uh, uh, Islamic uh, attitudes uh, precisely because um, the immigration has been constantly coming and then there's the for instance in the northern EU, Nor Nordic countries yeah. Sweden or mm -hmm. Denmark the, 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 the shocking result of the of the popular party in Denmark which won 20% yeah. uh, and so the, there is the fear of protecting the European culture which is basically um, an essentialist view of, of nationalism, ethno-nationalism, the white Europeans and uh, the Christian Europeans. So it's seen as the, this is, is falling under attack uh, and the, a declining population, European population, uh, the fertility rates in, in, in Europe for, for all the, the yeah. um, most of the uh, uh, countries has, have, have declined. So long term they see this as an ongoing trend of other immigrants coming from from the con uh, countries of uh, conflict uh, that it's seen as a uh, undermining and yeah. the problem is seen also as a uh, uh, that this population that comes to immigrants they don't assimilate with the culture and you have to yeah such yeah and um, so now we have a, a European group of uh, nations and freedom. Mm -hmm. It's a European block of group of, uh, uh, let's say, far right uh, parties, but they 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 had to uh, negotiate between each other for a year, mm -hmm. probably so. Uh, what's your impression? How 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 well they can coordinate between each other? How 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 common is their goal? Are their priorities are the, the same? The, was because, sorry, because mm -hmm. they, they also have two Polish um, uh, European uh, Parliament members now, so it's interesting. They, they it's interesting yeah. because because they, they are different vectors also. Uh, for, uh, the case with, with Poland is, is interesting because they are anti-Russian. And uh, uh, whereas the, especially the, the law, law and justice party, we remember very well uh, during the the, the uh, eight years of the Law and Justice Party. That's how how anti-German they were, how anti-Russian, and mm -hmm. uh, this Jagiellonian kind of policy that they uh, they uh, sort of expand expansionist in the sense of looking more to the east and 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 uh, so to combine them with uh, with Le Pen uh, supporters, uh, which are clearly pro pro-Russian uh, and with a clear intention of undermining, as you said, um, uh, European structures. Uh, it's very, if it's that very difficult to see. I mean, these these are uh, major major party blocks in the sense uh, in the European uh, yeah. scheme. So, um, so it's difficult to see where they can uh, uh, co cooperate. But uh, for instance. Uh, by uh, pushing more for uh, anti-immigration uh, measures at yeah. the European level, that could be one way that they can they can uh, um, and make also the, the speech much more acceptable to the European uh, public because uh, they they will be very much more uh, talking about this xenophobic and anti anti-immigration anti anti so, use. So, uh, do you mean that? The they will try to soften their language and uh, be less scary to the rest of the European electorate? Uh, that was exactly the case, the split with the National Front in, in, in France, mm -hmm. that uh, the father of uh, Marie Le Pen, yeah. uh, 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 um, she, yeah. uh, he, uh, because he had these anti-Semitic uh, anti views, uh, he was kicked out from from the party, and he's planning to establish a new party. Yeah. So uh, the, the the national front looks more towards um, towards uh, softening the power uh, in terms of anti-Semitism, but uh, increasing in anti-Islamic uh, 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 speeches and, and, and yeah. discourses. So in a way, uh, anti-Semitism uh, was replaced by. Uh, some kind of Islamophobia, or yeah, at, at least, least at least, at least, uh, public, publicly, 
in, in, in the public discourse we, uh, we don't know how, how deep yeah. but yeah. One, one would assume that they would uh, maintain some kind of uh, uh, this kind of old yeah. um, sentiments anti anti uh, Jewish uh, uh, sentiments anti Semitic uh, and now part of the expert community in Central and Eastern Europe but also elsewhere uh, is actually talking about yeah, Russian pro Russian influence, mm -hmm. Putin's influence on far right groups and parties in Europe. What's your ex uh, impression? Is it is it exaggerated or is it a real danger? And what would be uh, Russia's interest in it? Well, the, the interest is is that uh, Russia would not want to see a, a Euro European Union speaking with one voice. Yeah. Um, because this this would be uh, uh, clearly in the interest of uh, of, um, of the economic interest of Russia. Because if they come on a common front, as it came out now with the sanctions, it's always yeah. um, it, it doesn't work to the advantages of, of Russia in terms of selling its gas and so, or or influencing the, the politics. Uh, let's say in the in the. Eastern European countries, Bulgaria, it controls most of its, uh, uh, or Bulgaria buys most of its energy from Russia. Yeah. Uh, Poland tries to be a little bit more. So uh, the, the 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 goal for Russia would be, of course, to have a fragmented uh, Europe politically. Therefore, to have much more uh, voice uh, or its own interests being. Um, which one can see it as le legitimate from the point of view of Russia? It wants she wants it wants to be strong and affluent, inf uh, influential in, in yeah. Euro European politics. So this is this is one way uh, uh, why why Russia uh, would be interested to to uh, and there was I read it somewhere in a very, a very interesting statement that uh, before you know uh, in the twentieth century Russia was. The communists of the world unite, and the conservatives. Now it's the conservatives yeah. of the world unite with, yeah. with Russia. So uh, Russia wants to. Uh, very, very uh, recently, in the in the, in the uh, Putin's um, um, uh, president presidency, they they came with this niche conservative niche because for the first first years of Putin, they they were kind of they didn't know they were playing with this managed democracy. Yeah. idea and trying to uh, but then they went on full speed with this nationalist anti uh, homophobic and uh, anti um, Islamic and anti uh, uh, sort of the fighting against the decay of, of cosmopolitan Europe in the sense yeah. so this this in a way has the appeal also from the from the extreme uh, right parties because yeah. they see the clean uh, the idea of a homogeneous uh, uh, Europe, Europe as as essential for the um, yeah. for their own identity. Yeah. So so the so Polish far right groups might feel at this point a little bit uncomfortable with this uh, cooperation between far right groups, Western European far right groups, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and Russia. Uh, and by the way, what what happened on twenty fifth of uh, uh, October uh, in during Polish elections? What 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 is your impression? Um, I, uh, is I, there some big change in Polish politics? It does. It doesn't seem that uh, you could see this as a sort of a natural also cycle in in any politics that, yeah. that this uh, civic uh, civic platform was in. In, in power for for eight years, and there were some recent scandals. As it happens, that uh, um, politicians become comfortable with their own positions, and they they, they yeah. you know, uh, this is a, a common problem with uh, with uh, politics everywhere uh, to the corruption, uh, and so there were there were these these scandals that uh, that popped up, uh, but um, the the the. What was so I, I didn't find it uh, very surprising in, in, in many ways, and there were also tactical moves from from Kaczynski that he didn't didn't uh, run himself neither for for the presidency. Yeah. So the uh, he chose the, the female leader. Yeah. He chose that, and also the Should current be, yeah. current current president as well. So uh, in a way to. Uh, 
uh, to sort of uh, not scare off uh, the, the electorate. And also what was interesting why they uh, came to, to power was that uh, the, um, the, the outgoing uh, government signed uh, signed this convention on um, on uh, against uh, the, uh, domestic violence uh, in in, yeah. uh, in, uh, in Poland, and this somehow for a country being uh, deeply Catholic, uh, the the Catholic Church played a very uh, big, a surprisingly big role into opposing this. So uh, this was also one of the, one of the reasons why why they, they got such uh, such support and uh, also um, in terms of they had a, um, a little bit similar to what was happening also in in, uh, in Hungary uh, they um, uh, they came up with uh, uh, with initiatives to uh, to charge more the banks foreign banks uh, to raise their taxes and also uh, retract back on the on the um, uh, retirement age uh, for for pension, um, yeah. uh, pen, um, re retiring age. So these these were the moves, and also in terms of family. So they are more traditionalist that um, each family for a child would get 120 euros. It was in the in the their yeah. political platform, um, and of course the, the major thing is also that they are seen as anti. Uh, Federalists, so they they would oppose European Union's uh, seemingly encroaching uh, powers over. You mean over Kaczynski's? Uh, yes, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And uh, you also mentioned Hungary. Is Hungary the worst case now because they have a really bad publicity with their Fidesz party mm -hmm. and UB mm -hmm. and Orbán's uh, decisions? Uh, could, could it be said that uh, uh, this is a worst far-right case currently in Europe uh, in terms of uh, anti-liberalism or it's, it's Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an authoritarian uh, uh, kind of uh, system that is in, in place more or less, in the sense that they control most of the political, political system, uh, the 70 percent of, uh, of the parliament and Europe, as you said, is the the extreme of the. They are pretty, uh, pretty to the right, um, or already the, the yeah. Orban government. So you could you could say uh, you could say that they are um, uh, they are seen and with the the behavior that uh, the government showed during the crisis, which was in a way very very much. Um, uh, a reaction unnecessary because the immigrants were they wanted didn't want to stay in, in Hungary so this really gave a bad Im image of, yeah. of hung Hungary as a as a very um, uh, politically uh, xenophobic uh, and also um, uh, so the the sense of solidarity uh, seems to be thrown out of the window yeah. and, uh, and speaking of solidarity um, usually traditionally um, there were always uh, in Eastern Europe, well, elsewhere also, a strong left um, mm -hmm. movements and parties. We can take a uh, Polish example where the left uh, powers, uh, if I'm not mistaken, didn't even manage to enter the parliament. So, what's, what's going on? Where is left, which usually confronts the, uh, so, far right? So, when, when you have, I mean, this is classical textbook kind of thing when you look at. Uh, uh, in nationalism studies, this is very clear. When there is a crisis, a uh, major crisis in terms of, as it was economics or now the uh, the immigration, that uh, the big waves of immigration, uh, clearly the politicians uh, trigger these emotions of fear. So to play with the politics of fear. It's much more easy to play that kind of uh, uh, card as opposed to the solidarity uh, and. Um, the thing is also that um, most of the uh, left-wing parties see the see the arrival of immigrants, especially, or also the reduction into, in terms of spending power, austerity, as a problem, as a problem that they can't argue, uh, argue for others to uh, to come into their welfare uh, system. So they, they they can't be solidarizing very much with. Uh, with yeah. they, they don't seem to articulate uh, very yeah. well this sense of solidarity.
because mm -hmm. they see their welfare uh, systems under threat, education, uh, education and, uh, and the social benefits uh, that um, they have, they try to preserve it for their own. So they, they can also enter into this ethnic kind of yeah. um, discourse. Um, we already mentioned that Polish and Ukraine case mm -hmm. might be a bit different in terms of nationalism and far right groups. They might not to be very enthusiastic about um, ties with Putin uh, and uh, Russia's influence. Russia's influence. But uh, speaking of uh, Ukraine, uh, do you think that Ukraine has a big na problem of nationalism, maybe anti-Semitism there, or is it just a Russian propaganda? It's well, clearly there 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 is this um, right sector uh, that was very active during this uh, tumultuous political. Um, um, time that uh, uh, Ukraine has is undergoing, uh, but uh, in the elections, they, they the local election now they didn't figure out that much. They didn't gain any any uh, any mm -hmm. any support. So this this is a sign that actually there is not much in the in the uh, political discourse that they can uh, can attract uh, the, the electorate. But of course. Uh, one does not uh, reduce the, the likelihood that uh, this anti-Semitic or whatever xenophobic attitudes uh, will not gain traction. Um, I mean, uh, another point with uh, with why the uh, the left left is uh, is reduced. Uh, you you see it uh, again in in Hungary. It completely collapsed. In um, um, in Poland, it's also it's also out. Um, in Czech Republic, you you have a coalition there, but if you listen to the to the um, discourse of the Social Democrats, which are which are in power, their their language is also very uh, xenophobic. I mean, these countries did not have, um, like for instance, one example which I found very shocking: the the Minister of Interior in, in Czech Republic. Uh, when there were these discussions about the quotas of immigrants, yeah. uh, uh, he made a statement uh, saying that uh, these quotas are a bit like the uh, Munich Agreement in 1938. Oh. So there's a sense of stupidity, but also you could see the. Um, yeah. So there is no left. The, there is no left because yeah. because also uh, you can understand that this uh, European. European uh, Union, the liberalization, it's a, it's a uh, it's sort of a liberal, uh, neo, neoliberal kind of policy. So many mm -hmm. people will, will, will become losers in the sense uh, in, in, in economic exchanges uh, and uh, an opening up of the economies. And, and so the, the only way that uh, some of the discourse can uh, can counter that is through protectionism, rather than opening up. And the left would be more for opening up. Of, uh, so they are caught into this uh, impossibility of uh, yeah. having a, a, a viable uh, national economies. The right will say we are we are here and we will protect Europe from opening up our our economies. We opening up. Um, the welfare, uh, the welfare state, this idea of solidarity, then yeah. it's difficult to sell. Yeah. And um, the last one, probably, um, um, it's interesting to uh, remember that usually there is a dichotomy, there is a divide of uh, uh, civic uh, nationalism mm -hmm. of Western Europe and uh, more brutal and more and less tolerant Eastern European nationalism. And we could, we could uh, just take two examples of Nordic countries where even uh, anti-Muslim far-right groups try to be uh, super liberal and even sometimes pro-gay and pro-woman and feminist and uh, in that way underlying their commitment to European values mm -hmm. that are threatened by immigrants, immigrants and uh, especially Muslim immigrants. And there is uh, another side uh, where Actually, in Eastern Europe, probably there is still a problem of ethnic nationalism. Mm -hmm. do, do you agree that there is still a divide there? Uh, 
this is sort of a misnomer in the in the nationalism studies mm -hmm. literature that of course um, the the initial civic nationalism or political nationalism is uh, we can trace it with the French Revolution the idea of uh, you uh, that this is pa um, political patriotism or, or even with the with the British sense of uh, uh, patriotism with regards to to the institutions, the Queen, rather than uh, so this. But um, you can see, I mean, what we are just discussing now is it's this uh, sense of ethnic, widespread, uh, the ethno nationalism widespread in in all European countries. Uh, that we we're, we're talking France, and yeah. so we can't be saying that this Eastern Europe is is ethnic. Um, mainly we can describe the ethnic nationalism and France not yeah. uh, because you have the far right there that is uh, playing on this this yeah. line so um, but there are of course some some difference some nations define their um, citizenship in terms of uh, if you are born in th that country then you can get mm -hmm. a citizen, even though you are foreigner where some other so this distinction between new solis and new uh, um, solis and uh, um, the law of the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. In, in, in this in this regard, we can just uh, we can say that there is a distinction, but it's it, it's actually the the current uh, crisis is showing that uh, such distinctions are yeah. are simplistic. Uh, what about Georgia and nationalism in Georgia? Is it similar to you know, I mean, Bulgaria's Ataka Party or? Uh, What's what's your what would be your characterization of Georgian nationalists and who are they and what are the trends? And well, in in sort of as as a concept, we can we can place Georgian nationalism as a eth ethno religious kind of uh, nationalism. Uh, uh, for instance, if you compare it with the late nineteenth century and and uh, today's uh, nationalism, you then you had more of a civic kind of nationalism. Um, as it, as it was now, where religion is very much the the, the marker of what what defines Georgian Georgian um, nationalism, but uh, at the same time you also have the the the, the civic element that because Georgia still is uh, even though it's predominantly uh, uh, Orthodox has also a religious uh, other religious minorities in Achara and and. Yeah. and, and Armenians and, and so on and so forth. So, um, on the one hand, you have this preponderance of, of, uh, of ethno-orthodox and nationalism. At the same time, you have also this, and you don't see very much tensions playing out uh, strongly in terms mm -hmm. of it makes uh, the headlines in the in the world news in a sense. But of course, there there are tensions. Um, um, do you think that uh, nationalist, there is any nationalist agenda or strong sentiments in the um, in the political powers uh, that are elected and represented in the Georgian institutions, or it's more social and church-oriented and um, non-political? Uh, um, the interesting thing was with the na national movement as, as a party that try to play this card of nation, national nationalism and also the way how it uh, over the last years of, of, uh, of the when they were in power that they were leaning very much into because they were sort of losing the legitimacy and um, getting this kind of legitimizing from from the church in a sense so this this uh, we saw that played out um, currently we, we, we don't see most the parties um, in, in government being very much uh, playing the nationalist card in, in a sense yeah. um, but uh, it remains to to be seen how yeah. Professor Bisco, thanks a lot for joining us thank you for that thank you.